Hi, this is Rick from EssentialPhotoshopElements.com. In this video, we're going to see how the Polygonal Lasso tool works in Photoshop Elements. There's three different lasso tools to choose from in Photoshop Elements. All three of them are used to make selections around areas of your photos, but they all work a little differently. There's the regular lasso tool, which looks like this, the magnetic lasso tool, which looks like this, and the one that we're going to look at today is the polygonal lasso tool, and it looks like this. All three lasso tools share the lower left quadrant of the select section in the toolbox. So here's the select section, and here's the spot where you'll find the lasso tools. Only one of the three is visible at a time. You can see that in my toolbox, the regular lasso tool is visible. If I wanted to use the regular lasso tool, all I'd have to do is click on it to make it the active tool and I'd be ready to go. But I want to make the polygonal lasso tool the active tool, but I don't even see it. Here's how to get at it if it's not showing in the toolbox. First, click on whichever lasso tool is in that lower left area of the select section. So I'll click on my lasso tool and then go down to the options panel where you'll see all three of the lasso tools and click on the polygonal lasso tool to make it active. When I do that, you can see it now appears in the toolbox as the active tool. If you're using an older version of Elements, any version before version 11, then you just click and hold your mouse down over the visible lasso tool, whichever of the three it is, in the toolbox, and then all three of them will appear in a pop-up menu, and then you can make the polygonal lasso tool active by clicking on it from there. Notice how the icon for the polygonal lasso tool has a series of straight lines in it? That's because that's how it works. It makes straight line segments between the last two points where you click with your mouse. So you click once where you want your selection to start. I'll click here. And you don't need to hold down the mouse button after you click. You just click once, release your finger from the mouse button, and move to where you want the line segment to end. As you move your mouse, you can see exactly where the line is. You can make the line as long or short as you want, and you can rotate it anywhere around that first point. It'll stay in that flexible, kind of liquid mode until you click again, and then it will lock the line segment between those two points where you click. So I'll click here. Now, when I move my mouse, it comes out from that second point, and it's the same kind of flexibility. And it will stay like that until I click again, and then it locks that line segment, and so on as you click around. And if you don't like the line you created, you can undo it by pressing the delete key to remove the last point where you click. So I'll press the delete key, and now that just got rid of the point that's right under my cursor. And if I press delete again, it gets rid of that last line segment. And if you continue pressing delete, it will continue working backwards to delete previous points and line segments. I'm going to click and add some more line segments here because I want to show you that there's a couple of different ways to close or complete your selection with the polygonal lasso tool. One way is to double click your mouse. Elements will create a final straight line segment from where you double click to the first point where you click to start your selection. So I'll double click here and now my selection is closed as indicated by the marching ants and Elements connected my first and last points with a straight line segment, which is right here. I'm going to press Command-D on a Mac, or it would be Control-D on a PC, to deselect so that I can show you the other way to close your selection with the polygonal lasso tool. So I'll click around to create a few more line segments, and now say I want to close this selection. I'm going to move my cursor over towards my starting point, and you'll see a tiny circle appear as soon as I land right on top of that starting point. Look for that little tiny circle to appear, and that indicates that you're over your original starting point. And once you see that circle appear, if you click once, it will close your selection. So I'll do that now. And I'll deselect that. Just so you know, there's two different ways to close or finish off a selection. One is to double click, and the other one is to go over your starting point and click once. So let's see how it actually works on this photo I have open. I'm using Photoshop Elements 12 for this video. 
One other thing I want to do quickly before we get started is change my cursor icon from the polygonal lasso tools default icon to a crosshairs which I like using better. To get the crosshairs all I have to do is press the caps lock key on my keyboard. And I want to zoom in a little closer on my image, so I'm going to press down the spacebar and the command key on a Mac. It would be the spacebar and the control key if you're using a PC, and the cursor changes to the zoom tool. I'm going to move it over my photo and click a couple of times so I can really zoom in close and see the edges that I want to select. When you're done zooming in, just release the spacebar and the command or control keys and the cursor will turn back into the polygonal lasso tool. So I'm going to start here and select the bottom part of my tower. I'll click once and temporarily my uh, cursor turns back into the default polygonal lasso tool, but as soon as I drag my mouse it goes back to the crosshairs. And then I'll go to the next point before the direction of the line changes, which is right here, and I'll click again. And remember to just click and then let go of the mouse as you drag out your line. This time I'll purposely click in the wrong spot, so I'll just exaggerate it and go way out here. To undo that last click, I'll just press the delete key, and now I can click on the right spot, which is right here. And I'll just keep going around the edges of the area that I want to select, creating those straight line segments. If you get into a situation like I have here, where you can't see the next point where you want to click, because it's beyond the window of the work area, in my case I want to go down to the bottom of my photo, but I can't see the bottom right now, just press and hold the space bar down, and watch my cursor when I do that, it changes into the hand tool, and I'm going to keep holding down the space bar, and as I do I'll click and drag with my mouse, kind of drag up, until I can see the bottom of my photo. Then I'll release the mouse button and release the space bar and my cursor changes back to the polygonal lasso tool. Just to clarify, you're not actually moving your photo, you're scrolling through the live work area window to get to the part that you want to see. And when you're selecting something that goes all the way out to the edge of your photo, like this tower does on the bottom, here's what I usually do. I drag beyond the edge of the photo and click a point out there. So you can see I'm down in that gray area below my photo. So I'll click there and then I'll go over to the next, uh, near the next area where I want to make a point, which is right here. And I want to make sure that I stay within the outside part of my photo in this gray area and I'll click another point right there and when I eventually close my selection elements will know to make the selection straight across the very edge of the photo even though the line segment I made is not straight across but it's kinda slanting upwards or it's diagonal and now I'll just finish clicking the points where I need to to get my to get that area selected, I'll go over my starting point. Once I see the tiny circle, I'll click to complete my selection. So now we saw how the polygonal lasso uh, draws nice straight segments, but is there a way to select curved lines with it? And the answer is yes. You can use the polygonal lasso tool to follow curved edges by clicking points close together. So I'm going to deselect this and to show you how to um, select a curved area, I'm going to move up and maybe I'll zoom out a little bit and I'll just select this top part of my tower which kind of looks like a helmet or like a bell shape. So I'll start out here and click once and now as soon as I get about here that that segment's not straight anymore so I'll click here and then I'm going to make a couple more clicks. So that's how you get around a curved area is you click several points close together. And now I'm in kind of a, a longer straight area. So I can go up to about here and click. And now I have a curve coming up. I'm going to make a series of clicks to get around that curve. And it's kind of like the closer or the more the shape curves, more clicks you have to make to make it look nice and smooth. This is kind of a sharp curve down here. 
and now I can just do my straight line segments for the rest of it. And I'll finish it off by double clicking right here. You can also add or subtract from a selection with the polygonal lasso tool. To add to the selection, place your cursor anywhere inside of the selected area and then press and hold the shift key and see when I do that I get that little plus sign next to my cursor. Then click the mouse once to start the add-on and after clicking the mouse release the shift key and then you can drag and see I still have the plus sign next to my cursor indicating that I'm still in the add-on mode. And then let's say I just want to add this little strip of uh, molding below the bell shape. So I'll overlap my original starting and ending point right where they intersect and I'll click there. And now all I have to do is click around that trim. And now to finish my add-on of my selection, I'm going to go right to where these two points intersect and I'll go inside of my selection again, click once, and then just a couple more clicks to get to my original starting point. And once I see the little circle next to my icon, I can click and you can see it added that part to my selection. And you can also subtract from a selection and to show you that I'll just subtract that part that I just added. To subtract from a closed selection, place your cursor somewhere outside of the selected area. So I'll place mine out here and then press and hold the Option key on a Mac or the Alt key on a PC. You see a little minus sign appears next to your cursor and then I'll click the mouse once and after clicking the mouse, release the Option or Alt key. As I drag my mouse, the minus sign remains, indicating I'm in Subtract From mode. And then I'm just going to enter my selection right at this point. And I'm going to click along the edge where I want my, my selection to ultimately stop at, as opposed to where it stops now, which is right along here. Now when I get to this point, I'm going to go outside of the selected area again. And since I formed that inside edge, those last few clicks, now to get rid of the rest of the selection, I can just do a loose selection around that bottom part. And then when I get up here, I'll double click. And you can see that it gets rid of that part of the selection. So that ends this lesson on the polygonal lasso tool. As we saw, it can help us make some very accurate selections in areas that we have lots of straight edges, and even on curved areas. So give this tool a try, and I think you'll appreciate how quickly you can make straight line selections. Until next time, this is Rick saying take care.